Another change in plans. It came already, about two, three days ahead of schedule. I should give it back to the postman and say I want to wait and get it when I'm supposed to. Anyway, I guess we're going to have another package opening video. Well, I guess this is our practice hall. Oh, good. Here's our practice photo etch. Railings. Well, if I can learn to spray that without uh, filling it in. Okay, I've got no excuse now. Well, I've gone through pretty much all the kit, and I've picked out several pieces that had a lot of detail on them that I thought might be difficult to spray. Like, clearly something like this is going to be easy to spray. And maybe the hull sort of, it's, uh, I don't know. But uh, something like this is going to be a little harder to spray because, you know, will the airbrush be able to spray? spray in between the little tiny round pieces here I'm, I'm not too sure um, and places you know things like this might be hard to see there but what I'm hoping is that the uh, panel line accent color will you know I can try that out on something like this and it should uh, you know this is where it should really excel um, yeah, and then there's, you know, places like the sides of the ship and so on. They're very similar to the Bismarck kit that I have. There's detail in, right in there. And uh, then I I did my first photo etch bending using, using this. And this is supposed to be a little ladder of some kind. Kind of unique. Even the steps, I, I bent them at a 45 degree angle to represent you know, the way steps would be if the ladder was sort of going up at a 45 degree angle. I don't know if I, if I even did that right. This might have been for something else, but uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, look at the instructions at all. And of course, uh, this here is a, an example of a very delicate ladder. Be interesting to see how that's going to paint. Yeah. So I, I think I should be able to get some a lot of practice. I did I did keep everything else. I didn't throw anything out. So uh, if I need more practice, I'll just uh, nip off a few more pieces off the sprues there. And, but uh, yeah, I guess the the most important thing is the hull. I'm thinking maybe I should take it in the kitchen and uh, wash it off with soap and water just in case. I I don't know if it's already been done or not, but probably wouldn't hurt. Now here is something that I think I alluded to maybe a year or so ago, uh, maybe less, and I'm hoping that everybody is listening. And that is this. Well, first of all, way back, about five or six years ago, when I was doing my rants on the Laguna Resaw King Blade, I said something to the effect of that I realized that even if you took the smooth surface of a piece of high quality glass and were to enlarge it enough even that is going to look rough. Now the macro lens here 
is seeing things way closer than even I am wearing my magnifying hood. For instance, the little nub that I forgot to uh, file off the end there that wouldn't allow this piece to sit down, you know, to seat properly in the plastic part. I didn't see that, and I didn't even notice that it wasn't seated properly. I didn't notice that I was putting on way too much glue. Um, well, there's a couple of reasons for that. Now the main reason, I guess we'll call this number one. I am not seeing this enlarged anywhere near as much as the macro lens is enlarging it on your screen that you're looking at. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it enlarged because I do have the magnifying hood on, but yeah, it, it's just not near that big. So there's a lot of little details that I'm seeing after the fact, like this little piece of dust. Yeah, that's very hard to see. In fact, that's impossible to see unless you've got some sort of magnification going on. Now, um, the, the second reason is because I've got the piece angled at best angle for the camera lens, um, yeah, it's, it's almost at the worst angle for me. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm enjoying doing this. Um, but anyway, those are my excuses, and I'm going to stick to them. Now for the spraying. This is what we've been waiting weeks for, right? Anyway, what I did was I turned off my furnace so that the air wouldn't be circulated through the house. And then I did the spraying thing, as you're going to see. And, yes, I did remember to put my face mask on about halfway through. I was thinking to myself, well, this stuff sure doesn't smell near as strong as when I did the silk and dope thing years ago when I did model airplanes. Then I suddenly remembered, hey, wait a minute, I'm supposed to have this mask on. So I stuck it on. And I wore it, oh, I guess maybe I sprayed for about two minutes there, but I don't think I'm going to die. Like I say, I could hardly smell it. I wasn't noticing any uh, mist coming back, uh, you know, like blow blowback from out of the box. I think that the uh, paint booth probably took care of most of it. Now, it didn't take care of the odor, but I'm sure it got rid of that mist. Anyway, now I've got my door propped open. And a bonus. Today isn't real cold. It's maybe just a little bit below freezing outside. So, I don't mind having the door open. Now I'll just wait another few minutes. It's still open as I'm speaking, by the way. And I'll wait another few minutes and we'll close the door. And then we'll do a little bit with the airbrush. This time I remembered to put on the face mask before I started spraying. But I forgot to turn on the fan. Well, I came up with a bit of a solution that might help remind me. You know, it was really nice to have actual model parts to uh, practice on, better than a block of wood or something. 
a lot of little contours and fine lines, you know, and yeah. Anyway, by the time I got to the end, I was sort of getting the hang of it. I think it'll go okay. And here's my solution to help me remember the next time. Do you think it's going to work? Probably not. Anyway, tomorrow, all being well, we'll paint the hull and uh, maybe a few more pieces. We'll just see how it goes. Yeah, in the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>